The British ER-134D specification, the fastest in the world at the time, was completed in 1954 in response to the US X-15 spaceplane project. The aircraft had to dissipate severe heat, which required innovative engineering in order to maintain speeds of Mach 2.75 for lengthy periods of time. A contract was given to Bristol Airplane to build six Bristol Type 188 airframes, an experimental twin-engine jet plane made of stainless steel that was intended to minimize kinetic heating, which would have melted conventional aircraft. The Flying Pencil got its nickname from its thin, costly, and intricate design. Following the English Electric Lightning's 1954 first flight, supersonic flight became the norm for military aircraft in the 1950s. As a result, the UK was able to reach speeds twice the speed of sound. Supersonic aircraft, however, posed difficulties for engineers, pilots, and designers. In an effort to gain air superiority, the Royal Air Force developed specification ER-134D, which allowed for steam flight at Mach 275 and higher. The objective was to get knowledge about kinetic heating and keep the aircraft safe for pilots while achieving top speed after the US X-15 spacecraft the British eventually possessed the second fastest aircraft in the world. With the goal of gathering information on the kinetic heating effects of an aircraft operating at Mach 3 or higher the Type 188 was created to satisfy ER-134D requirements for a high-speed reconnaissance aircraft. With a skin temperature of around 300 degrees Celsius, the project's goal was to present definitive data on high-speed operations and the kinetic heating effects of an aircraft. In February 1953, Bristol Aircraft was given the go-ahead for Project 188. Three aircraft were to be built by the company, two for flight testing and one as a testbed. XF-923 and XF-926 were the designations given to the aircraft. It was determined after considerable deliberation that new building techniques would be necessary for the development of the advanced aircraft. For their aircraft, Bristol chose unique steel grades such as mixed steel with chromium content and austenitic titanium steel. But the project ran into problems such applying chromium mixed steel via puddle welding, which slowed down progress and produced inadequate results. The W.G. Armstrong Whitworth Company provided critical technical support for the production of certain airplane components. A fused quartz cooling system was designed, but never tested, to maintain a steady cockpit. The process was delayed because the aircraft required engine installations that could accept various engine types, air intakes, and propelling nozzles. The Type 188's endurance was just 25 minutes, significantly less than the necessary high-speed research experiments due to the usage of lighter Gyron Jr. engines instead of the heavier Avon engines that were originally planned. The first completed aircraft handed to the Royal Air Force in 1960 for static testing was the XF-923. Nevertheless, it required a year of effort due to afterburner and input difficulties. Several large-scale models were created and tested to address problems, some of which were mounted on rocket boosters to evaluate the model's ability to fly freely. Eight years after the initial procurement in 1962, the plane was prepared for takeoff. On a transfer flight from Bristol to Boscombe Down, the 188 made its first flight. Obtaining the proper materials and altering the middle wings, owing to aerodynamic concerns, were among the building obstacles encountered by the project. Although the English Electric Lightning and Type 188 aircraft were prepared for flight in 1962, they had difficulty attaining Mach 2 speeds, even though their maximum shutter speed at 36,000 feet was Mach 1.88. There were only two minutes of high-speed flying due to the engines pitching and yawing, which quickly depleted fuel, 
The Royal Air Force's interest in Type 188 declined in the 1960s due to a shift in priorities away from high-speed aircraft to missiles. This resulted in the need to remodel engine bays, build new intakes, and replace the engines. Estimated to cost 20 million British pounds, the Flying Pencil Project did not meet ER-134D specifications. Support for the Type 188 was decreasing despite attempts to alter the aircraft. 70 flight tests were carried out in total, the fastest speed Mach 1.88, which corresponds with the plane's type and designation, was reached. The longest subsonic journey lasted 48 minutes. In September 1962, the aircraft was first shown to the public at Farnborough and the SBAC Air Show. The British Supersonic Flying Project Endeavour was abandoned in 1964 due to its poor performance and restricted ability to fly above the speed of sound. The project's final flight took place on January 12th of that year, and because of conflicting information about supersonic travel, the Endeavour's value for study was questioned. The purpose of the Type 188 program was to collect data for the Avro 730 aircraft's development. Data from test flights was shared with Avro planes and delivered to a base station for analysis. The Avro 730 was designed to be a Mach 3 reconnaissance and strategic bomber aircraft for the Royal Air Force in compliance with Air Ministry requirements and specification QR330. The greatest speed of the Type 188 testing failed to reach the Mach 2 objective, fuel leaks occurred, and the endurance was only about 25 minutes. Thus, the data was not very encouraging. Had Avro's aircraft been put into service, it could have taken the place of V-bombers as the principal airborne nuclear bombing platform for the United Kingdom. Avro was greatly impacted by a defense white paper that was published in 1957 the study described the objectives and plans for British military development, emphasizing how the development of missiles and the possibility of Soviet anti-aircraft weapons could make the majority of crewed aircraft unfit for primary defense. This resulted in the aircraft industry going through layoffs and mergers, with the UK losing several other manned aircraft programs, as well as the Avro 730. Concerned that bomber aircraft would become obsolete, Due to missile technology, the military and administration placed a high priority on the nation's financial situation. Air combat between nuclear bombers and fighter planes would cease as surface-to-air missiles posed a hazard to all aircraft. The space era also proved that missiles could be fired and targeted from anywhere in the globe, including the UK and Soviet Russia. To make the 188 aircraft a more successful model, a number of modifications were suggested, such as switching from ramjet to rocket engines, creating fighter or reconnaissance versions, and adding wedge-style intakes. But none of these concepts came to pass. After development was put on hold in 1964, every aircraft had to have its components removed and cannibalized in order to be prepared for flight in the future. In the UK, this research initiative was the most costly. The Type 188, the final aircraft built by Bristol Aeroplane Company, represented a critical turning point in the creation of military aircraft. The industry was impacted by the 1957 Defense White Paper, which resulted in project cancellations and mergers because the projects were thought to be too expensive or not sufficiently protected against anti-aircraft missiles. But as missile development took off, the business merged in 1960 to form the British Aircraft Corporation, along with Vickers Armstrong, English Electric Aviation, and Hunting Aircraft. The remaining pencil planes were transported to Sabrina's Essex for gun tests. They were never utilized in battle. The Type 188 model XF-926 was disassembled and delivered to the Royal Air Force Cosford Station in 1972 so that it could be studied and used as a teaching aircraft. For scrap, the other Type 188 model XF-923 was shipped to Falness Island. To watch more videos on American bombers, click the link on the left. 
To watch more than two dozen videos on German aircrafts, click the link on the right. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.